featuring head coach Rick Minter. Sponsored in part by your friends at Kroger, by Pepsi, nothing else beats a Pepsi, and by Miller Lite, who reminds you that anything can happen at Miller time. Our kids will invest everything they got in the game on Saturday, and if we don't beat ourselves, we give ourselves a chance. If we get lucky a little bit, get a few breaks, hit a few big plays, contain their kicking game, stop their run, move the ball ourselves, we have a chance. <laughs> Is that all? That was UC head coach Rick Minter a few days before the Wisconsin game, and as it turns out, he was a bit of a prophet. September 18, 1999, a UC student wins the Miss America pageant, the UC Bearcats knock off a top 10 team. Hi again, everybody. I'm Dan Horde. Welcome to Inside UC Football. The final score, Cincinnati 17, Wisconsin 12. Coach, congratulations and a great win and a great day for UC football. Well, first, let's congratulate our, uh, congratulate our players. First and foremost, players win games. And uh, my hat's off to our kids who had the heart of a lion yesterday and persevered and hung in there and overcame all the bad breaks early and just to stave off a great football team in Wisconsin. The plan pretty much went according as we laid it out throughout the course of the week for the things to happen. For us to have an opportunity to knock off a top 10 team, they did it. Congratulations to our staff. Put together a heck of a game, playing on both sides of the ball, did what it take to win. And I'm just so happy for the city, our students who stormed the field, and particularly because the game was aired nationally for all the UC alums dating all the way back to that bowl game, a day to stick your chest out a little bit and pound it and say, hey, I'm proud to be a UC alum. No question about it. And let's get to those highlights. A beautiful day at Nippert Stadium, roughly 27,000 fans <coughs> in attendance. Wisconsin was able to move the ball, but it didn't uh, cost you the ball game. Well, Dan, we said going in, Ron Dane's going to get his yard. You know, if you remember the day of the Chicago Bulls, you're never going to stop Michael Jordan. You just make sure the other four supporting members don't beat you. And what we wanted to do on this day was to not let the quarterback all of a sudden become an All-American or a fullback or a backup tailback. Ron Dane's a great runner. You know, he's going to mush through the Big Ten. He's going to get his yards, per, and we wish him well. Barry Alvarez there is a great friend and a good football coach. And uh, he's going to get his yards. But unfortunately, our 33 is also. Mm -hmm. This is what we had to play for. And Robert Cooper on fresh legs, back off the break from a week ago, uh, came back with a vengeance. We had to have a couple of big plays in this ball game to have an opportunity. <coughs> Excuse me. And Robert delivered right there. Good, good blocking up front. Uh, Larry Zerline had his young kids playing quite hard on this day. And here's JB stepping in front. You're so happy for a journeyman like Jeff Burrow. You know, we moved him to, to wide out, or from wide out, Dan, to DB because he couldn't catch, hmm. okay? So all of a sudden, he's over there catching footballs and doing a heck of a job. And we will hear from Jeff Burrow later <clears> in the show. It's a classic uh, day. Look at this back. It's a classic game of Ben don't break defense. We knew going in we're going to give up some yards, just kind of play rope-a-dope and put us on the ropes for a, you know, we took an eight count a couple of times right, right there. The ball's on the one-yard line, but big Mario, look at this number 90 come flashing through there. And it was important that Ron Dane, of course, we still could have done that to Ron Dane, but, you know, his ankle got gimped a little bit, and they come in and settle for the three. Mm -hmm. And that was big. You know, our kids hung in there, and if a team ever grew mentally, emotionally, and maturity-wise from one week to the next week, it was the Bearcat team on this day from last Saturday's defeat. In other words, we, we flinched under fire last week. We didn't make a couple of plays we should have. This week, no matter what the circumstances were, we hung in there and never, ever succumbed to the, the emotional swings in this ball game, and there were quite a few. Nice drive late in the first half. You didn't get any more points out of it, <clears> but you prevented Wisconsin from getting the ball and, and going down and trying to take the lead. Well, it's a great interception by the cornerback right here. That's number two. He's one of the best in the country right now, perhaps the best in the Big Ten. <laughs> and of course, Jimbo's a little hacked off right there. That's really what we call, I mean, it's a disappointing turnover because we did not get points before the half. It's a meaningless turnover, and the fact it didn't swing field position, it didn't, uh, uh, very disappointing we didn't get points out of it. But, you know, we've now played three ball games, only turned the ball over twice mm -hmm. now in offense, a big turnaround from last year, and that's a big factor in that game. You're up 7-6 at the half. What's the halftime speech? Well, the fact that you, I've been there before. Kansas State a while back in, in years past we've had leads at halftime and with the young team you got to make sure that's one of those days where you wish you never would have had a halftime just keep mm -hmm. playing keep doing it and you don't want a young team to get in there and start you know saying hey 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 you know they're going to come out and give you your best shot and that's why we had to address them hey the, the fight's half over unfortunately we don't keep scores by halves we keep it for 60 minutes this is intermission expect the best shot Wisconsin's got whatever reason they didn't play well or because you kicked their tails early, 
for whatever reason, expect their best shot. Let's just make sure they get our best shot, and they did in the second half. Certainly to begin the third quarter, they did. This is huge. You go right down the field and <clears throat> score a touchdown on your first drive of the second half. Very, very big in a ball game. Just like anything, the first four or five minutes of an opening half sets a tone, and we went in there with some misdirection. We had gotten them running, the backers and all running against our outside play. And we thought we had to do some misdirection like right here. You see Deontay, we call this a naked because he comes around uncovered as an offensive, you know, protector. And uh, Tony Michael came up big in the second half. And right here is uh, uh, Deontay Ken on the option, kind of alias old Chad Plummer right there. Lloyd Garden got a great block mm -hmm. in there on a scrape linebacker. And look at this right here. Run with your pads down, Coop. And that's what he did. He took that cornerback and mashed him a little bit. And that set us up for a great call by Jimbo right here. And our kids executed quite well. And Deontay, you know, now thinks he's John Elway or something <laughs> with all the running ability. But uh, maybe the sevens are lucky for us there. Well, that thing broke wide open. And you went up 14 to 6 after Deontay's touchdown. Well, it, it goes back to the fact we've got us an eight-point lead. And, and not running scared. But you know right now it's going to take a touchdown and a two-pointer, you know, to get it even, Stephen, if you will. And you also knew 33 is going to get some yards. We're hanging on our blocks right there. We've got to learn to get off blocks better. And we had some uh, very favorable calls, not, not unjust calls, but we finally got the calls you're supposed to get. When they hold, they hold. And the touchdown made it 14-12. <clears throat> Wisconsin did miss the two-point conversion. Now Wisconsin with the ball again trying to take the well, lead. Well, this, you know, this is what you like to see. You know, we almost won it right there. But uh, this is a big play in the ball game. Right here with eight minutes to go in the ball game. You know, we got them and tinkered. You know, I feel so bad for the guy that, uh, you know, he's an All-American type kid back there and he wants to do so well. We're, we're you know, hopefully awaiting his return 100%. But, you know, you know, you live by the Dane, you die by the Dane. And <laughs> right here, our kids right here, Bobby Fuller got that thing out of there. And again, Jeff Burrow, Johnny on the spot, if you will. And that was, again, a big saver. Rick Smith right there jumping <laughs> up and down. If you have to play, Ben, don't break. You're, you're playing rope-a-dope defense whether you're taking the counts. And... Uh, Right here, another another ice water in the vein job by Jonathan Ruffin. We call him Ruffin the kicker. And uh, <laughs> but you know, tremendous amount of poise for a young freshman right out of high school. And here again, it's a fantastic finish. As a coach, what you always want to have. This is reminiscent of some games I've been in before. Fortunately, the tackle moved right there, and I think our guys relaxed. To be honest with you, otherwise I'd like to see a step in front and make that pick, and the game would be over. We'd decline the penalty. But as it is, we just wanted it to be more exciting down the stretch run here. And you know our students are anxious here waiting us in the end zone right here to see this thing be over with. And right here is going to go down with one of the great wins in UC history. And I loved it when the kids and the, and the students returning to campus on this very weekend had an opportunity to storm the field. Quite a sight at Nippert Stadium. The Bearcats yeah. knock off number nine Wisconsin. And here's the game summary. Cincinnati wins at 17-12. Two fourth quarter turnovers saved it for UC. Robert Cooper led the way offensively with 20 carries for 143 yards, including a 51-yard touchdown. Adam Wolfeck doing a nice job punting the football. Seven punts, three dropped inside the 20. His average 45 yards for the ball game. Stay tuned when Inside UC Football continues. We'll hear from several of the Bearcats players. We'll be back with Coach Minter in just a moment. For a world-class golf experience, you can't beat the Kroger Senior Classic presented by First Star. The Kroger Senior Classic features the PGA Senior Tour's biggest stars, led by Lee Trevino, Hugh Bayaki, and the leading money winner on the Senior Tour, Hale Irwin. So come on out to the Golf Center at Kings Island from September 20th to the 26th. But first, stop by Kroger, pick up your single-day discount passes for just $10 each. Don't miss the savings, don't miss the world-class golf at the Kroger Senior Classic presented by First Star. I want to like Rebecca, I really do. But she thinks Miller Lite tastes great because it's smooth. And Rick thinks it's because of the choice hops. And even if we could get past that, we'd still argue over whose work sells the most sports magazine. Okay, in-depth analysis of the nickel defense or fishnet bikinis. You decide. Look, Rebecca, guys buy sports magazines for great sports writing. Oh, great. So I guess we'll be seeing that Rick Riley sports writing calendar any day now. Oh, man. <laughs> Miller Lite, the great taste of a true Pilsner beer. New York City, home of the Rangers, versus Mystery Alaska, home to 642 people. Do we really stand a chance? From the director of Austin Powers and the creator of The Practice, on October 1st, Bobby, the game is 
It's on. You guys know what you're made of. I know what you've got inside. Mystery Alaska. Nervous? Rated R. Starts Friday, October 1st. Cooler? Hey, guys. Hey, hey. Oh, cinnamon raisin. Mmm, what's yours? Sourdough. Uh-oh. Oh. Thomas has English muffins, the nooks and crannies muffins. Uh, One little taste. I don't think so. An American tradition for over 100 years. Oh, oh look at that. Oh. Thomas's? Makes bagels? Thomas's bagels. Fresh, pre-sliced, golden on the outside, and... Great. Thomas's, an American tradition for over 100 years. Welcome back to the show. If college football fans around the country are shocked, the UC Bearcats say they aren't. Surprised a bit, maybe. Shocked, no. Let's start hearing from the players, beginning with Robert Cooper. His 51-yard touchdown gave the Cats the lead in the second quarter, and he called the win the highlight of his four years at UC. They are ranked team in the top ten, and we beat them. They thought we were some pushovers or something. I don't know, but they played hard. We played hard, and we came out on top. We worked hard this week, had long practices. Everybody trying to handle their assignments and learn what to do because we knew they were going to come in and run the ball and had a good defense and we just prevailed. You knew it would be hard to sustain a long drive against Wisconsin, so the big plays become huge. Yeah, what we had to do then was to rely offensively on not turning it over, not necessarily pulling your, your reins in. Shoot, we lined up in four wideouts most of the day. But to not lose the ball game, which means don't turn the ball over, don't do anything foolish. Pound it up in there a little bit, and then at the same time, try to break one. Runner pass, and Coop's the one that delivered for us a 51-yarder that helped get us off and running. Part of his 143-yard day against the Badgers. Now onto the defense. Perhaps the biggest play of the game was Ron Dane's fumble midway through the fourth quarter. Senior Jeff Burrow recovered it. Um, down around the goal line, and Ron Dane was struggling to reach out toward the goal line, and I saw Bobby Fuller pop the ball out, and I just dove on it. This is my last year, so this is moments like this is what I came back for. And that's the first time I've ever seen it happen here, and it's just an unbelievable feeling. Well, I'm certainly glad that our, our fine folks here at XIX and Dave and his crew got the shot. This is the first time I've ever seen with a goalpost, <laughs> but uh, that's the way college football is supposed to be. As, 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 as JB said, I'm so happy for kids like this. Pulled up all the seniors before the ball game after our captains had departed, and I said, fellas, we only got a handful of seniors. All of you in this room are going to make a return trip to Madison next year. These four or five guys aren't. And I said, let's go out and dig down a little deeper for these fellows. And it's guys like JB and Bobby Fuller and Tinker Keck and Coop right now are the only basic seniors playing for us. We have some other journeymen. Carlton Sykes is playing. But uh, this one was one for the ages, but particularly our seniors. Ron Dane finished the game with 231 yards, but the Cats got him on the ground when they had to. The leading tackler yesterday was junior Dewan Gossett. And after the game, we asked him, when he got the sense that UC might be able to pull off the win? Probably the end of the second quarter when uh, we were stopping them. They were, they were getting yards and whatever, but they weren't, they weren't scoring. And uh, I seen them starting to get upset, you know, um, arguing with each other. And I, I knew we had them rattled, and our coach was calling a great scheme, and the players just played very well. Here again, it's a great sack by our defense, and we hit this kid quite a few times, missed him a couple of times, really, and we got lucky a couple of times. This is all the way the plan was laid out. Fellas are going to make the yards. we got to bend but don't break on Ron Dane, get our takeaways at key moments, set up our offense, and set up our kicking game quite well, and the game unfolded just that way. I've never seen a defense play so darn hard in my life, knowing what they were up against. They were outweighed about 40 pounds of man across the front, but uh, the, the front wall stacked it up in there. The backers capped it off. The secondary did a great job. And I, we didn't give up big, big plays. A couple of ones squirted out of there for 20 or so. But we didn't give up the big bomb that, that haunted mm -hmm. us a week ago. And this is a great rallying cry for our defense. Key stat to keep in mind, Wisconsin came in with 99 points in its first two games. Only had a dozen yesterday. Offensively, Deontay Kenner didn't have a huge game, but didn't make any key mistakes. Here's what the Bearcats quarterback had to say about what the win does for the UC program. Well, I think what this does is give us a big lift going into a, another tough game that we have next week. And I think it helps out our conference tremendously. Our whole team believed it. We tried to strive during the week. All you got to do is believe. We, we, got, we felt we had a good game plan going into the game. Our defense felt they had a good plan going into the game. And all we did was try to execute it on both sides of the ball. I tell you what, uh, Deontay Kenner, uh, being a little bit of a low-key guy, first couple of years he's here, is beginning to take on Jimbo's personality more and more because it's aggressive, it's all about belief, it's execution, it's doing the little things, and that's the way he's beginning to play, and I think he's being tutored quite well. 
Uh, Deontay's going to be a winner for us. Uh, unfortunately, he's out having to leave town today or late last night. As soon as the game was over, he's notified his grandmother is definitely ill. We wish him well. Her, you know, she's in our mm -hmm. thoughts right now. We've encountered this all along. It's what family's all about, and we wish him well. Hope it's not a major setback for him. Kenner, 14 for 27 in the game yesterday. Several key third down pickups, which is obviously significant in Cincinnati's five-point win. Stay tuned. When we come back, we'll meet redshirt freshman running back P.J. Mays. Inside UC Football continues in just a moment. But we're in a good spot, okay? If you've had credit problems, now's the time to go to J.D. Byrider. For a limited time, get a great used car, just $199 down. Don't let your plans to buy a new car stay in limbo. Get to the J.D. Byrider low, low, low down payment sale. Oh! 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 New Grape Nuts O's even surprise the folks here at Post. The wholesome grains of grape nuts baked into light, crispy O's with a touch of brown sugar. A taste that's light and toasty and naturally sweet. Oh, from grape nuts? Oh! Oh! oh. Yup, we had the same reaction. New Grape Nuts O cereal. It's a whole new spin on grape nuts. <laughs> this fall, you need to fall into Devereaux's and get hooked up from head to toe. Save on Gessinger Boat outfits for men and women. Save on Pelly Pel Jean outfits and Sean John. Or what about Texas Tough Denim outfits? And five denim outfits starting at only $39.99. Plus get five Docker pants in four colors. Let your feet do the talking with Nautica Sidonias for only $59.99. And 20% off all K Swiss and rebound for kids at select locations. This fall, the prices are falling at Devereaux's. So come to the location nearest you because everybody knows where to get their clothes. Devereaux's. Welcome back to Inside UC Football. It's the nature of college football. When a good player leaves, you hope to plug another good one in. The Bearcats have had several outstanding running backs in recent years and appear to have uncovered another one this year. Greg Horde has the story of redshirt freshman P.J. Mays. As the Bearcats season begins, one name has continued to emerge. P.J. Mays, redshirt freshman out of Youngstown. His performance has set him apart. He's a good running back. You know, he's talented, he's durable, holds on to the football. Was he a 3,000-yard rusher in high school? So we knew he was good, but uh, I didn't know he had that many moves. You know, he's not built like a guy that can just make you miss every time, and he just, he's just a good running back. In the first two games of the season, Mays averaged 91.5 yards rushing. He came off the bench in the opener against Kent and ran for 98 yards on 15 carries, including a touchdown. He was nearly as good in game two, running for 85 yards on 20 carries against Troy State. But that game offered his coaches another insight in the maze. The greatest thing about the kid, he's a very loyal kid. I mean, it hurt him to lose. Uh, it really devastated him the other night against Troy because, you know, he felt like that, geez, we, we did some things well enough that maybe we could have scored or whatever. But, you know, just a very... Uh, you know, nice kid to coach. I mean, you, you know, you hear that old story, nice guys finish last. I don't think it's the case with P.J. Quiet, yes. Soft-spoken indeed, but make no mistake, there is some serious grit in this guy, too. He plays every aspect of his position one way. Hard, blocking, carrying the ball. And as a receiver, in the first two games, Mays had eight catches for 59 yards and a touchdown. Just the versatility, I think, gives P.J. a, a leg up on a lot of people. But don't ask him about that leg up or that edge he may have on others. In this age of booyah and self-proclamation, Mays has few words for his own performance. It's like um, you don't want to put anything upon yourself that you know that you might not be able to handle. So I just 
talk about myself as I'm okay. I'm just all right. He's far more than okay, all right. Keep in mind, Mace couldn't practice at all last season because of a blood disorder. However, by the spring game, he was ready to roll. Mays ran for 69 yards on 17 carries and caught two passes for 49 yards. And he just kept it coming. And you're basically looking at a kid. What you have to remember is he did not practice last year, I don't believe, very much. Uh, and it was a situation where the spring really was his first time to be indoctrinated to not only the offense, but also to the rigors of college football. So he's gone through a learning process basically with me since I've been here since last March of, uh, you know, stepping forward as a true freshman from the standpoint of uh, eligibility and, you know, stepping up real nicely and doing a lot of things well. You don't have to look far to find compliments for Mays. They are plentiful. He just does what you ask him. You know, he's, he's not a, a rah-rah guy or he won't even know he's in the room with you. He just goes out and does his job. Just a blue-collar guy. In this day and age, a player who will do what you ask him to do is pretty damn valuable. <laughs> we need a lot of them. For Inside UC Football, this is Greg Horde. Robert Cooper obviously had the bulk of the carries yesterday, 20 for his 143 yards, but P.J. Mays came off the bench when Coop was hurting a little bit, gave you f uh, 15 carries on four yards, and great thing about this kid is you have three and a half years to look forward to. Uh, P.J.'s going to have his day in the sun or night, whatever the case might be, and he has already. Uh, as you well know, Dan, we platoon backs around here quite a bit. Right now, Robert Cooper's our workhorse, and when the game was on the line yesterday, I wanted Coop in there. We also didn't get as many plays yesterday. You know, the first couple of ball games, we up around 80 plays a ball game. This one was just a, t a tad over 50 plays in the ball game. That's 30 more plays. PJ may get his 12 or 15 carries always, and Nathan Wise is still there. So we got some red shirt backs waiting in the wings. We got great competition at the running back. And if you're going to be a good football team, you got to have a guy that can tote the mail for you. And judging by Greg's story, P.J. Mays is really doing a nice job of working hard, paying attention, and learning as a redshirt freshman. As Amos freshman. pointed out, this guy is phenomenal because he did not even get to practice last year. I think we practiced him less than a week mm -hmm. before it was discovered. It was more of a mononucleosis-type disorder. It wasn't that, but very similar. So the doctors could not release him to well into February. So he didn't even weight train, didn't even condition because of the, the fear. And so he's come a long way in a short period of time. And with him, as you mentioned, being you know four more years basically around here, he's going to mature physically. This kid will wind up being a 220, 225 pound back, where right now he's 210, 28, uh, got great moves. He's uh, he's really our most all-purpose back right now. I mean, he's the guy that you'd say could play fullback and block, receiver and catch, and running back and run. He's a very complete football player. Another outstanding back growing at UC. Stay tuned. When we come back, we'll look ahead to another big one as the Bearcats head to the horseshoe. Inside UC Football continues in just a moment. I want to like Rebecca, I really do. But she thinks Miller Lite tastes great because it's smooth. And Rick thinks it's because of the choice hops. And even if we could get past that, we'd still argue over whose work sells the most sports magazines. Okay, in-depth analysis of the nickel defense or fishnet bikinis. You decide. Look, Rebecca, guys buy sports magazines for great sports writing. Oh, great. So I guess we'll be seeing that Rick Riley sports writing calendar any day now. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Miller Lite, the great taste of a true Pilsner beer. If you want your car to pass this daily test, come to a place with a track record of great service, low prices, and nationwide warranties. Come to Meineke. At Meineke, you won't pay a lot, but you'll get a lot. You'll always get a lot at Meineke. Shocks are struts for German makes, brakes for Swedish models, and mufflers for Japanese cars. Nobody speaks foreign cars like Meineke. At Meineke, you won't pay a lot, but you'll get a lot. But being sweet and wonderful all day takes a lot out of you. Excuse me. Clouds. So, when it's snack time, I feel I deserve something sweet and wonderful in return. Like these Philadelphia snack bars. A delicious taste of cheesecake in a clever little bar. Oh. <laughs> Up here we recycle. New Philadelphia snack bars. Share my joy. 
Welcome back as we look ahead to next week's opponent. The Ohio State Buckeyes ranked 13th in the country before yesterday's 40-13 win over Ohio. OSU leads the series 9-2, but it's been a long time between meetings. The last meeting coming in 1931. The Buckeyes, of course, play at UC in a couple of years. Let's take a brief look at some highlights from yesterday's win over Ohio. Full house at the horseshoe, as always, and... Steve Belisari is really taking charge as the starting quarterback now. The lefty hitting Kenyon Rambo for the 68-yard touchdown here. Just a ton of weapons on this Ohio Well, State this team. is a very talented football team. I think John's done as good a job as any coach in the Big Ten, you know, restoring and maintaining each and every year. They just keep reloading. This year it's Belisari and the names like that, Michael Wiley running the football. You know, once you get between the lines out there next Saturday afternoon, the horseshoe will be on grass. It'll be the same as it was this week. Quality opponent, big-time game. The difference will be the surrounding. You know, we're going to have to do something to, to simulate, if you will, crowd noise this week and do some things that uh, we're not used to. We've been at home for three weeks, and we don't quite draw the type of crowds these guys do, and it's going to be very hostile, and we're not going to sneak up on this team either. I mean, we're coming in there like a plague right now, having been noticed, and mm -hmm. uh, so they're going to be ready for us. We're going to get their best shot. We fully expect it. wouldn't take anything less, and we look forward to going up there and renewing this rivalry, if you will, and maybe it can turn into, quote, a rivalry, something that, you know, every two or three years you're playing these guys. It's a four-game uh, con four contract, three games at Ohio State, the one game coming up at UC. We look forward to next week's game against the Buckeyes. And that's going to do it for this week's show. For Coach Minter, executive producer David Ashbrock, and our entire crew, I'm Dan Horde. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week on Inside UC Football.